Hello everyone, Bandit here. As you no doubt are well aware of by now, this week we just got a new sneak peek at the highly anticipated sequel to Breath of the Wild. And it looks like I was wrong about the castle being a divine beast. It's okay, it's all a part of the process. More importantly though, since this moment is way too big for one person to handle alone, I'm gonna have to call in a friend. Hey, Mr. Zeltic, how are you doing? Yeah. Hi, um, who is this? It's Masked Nintendo Bandit. Oh, right, Masked Nintendo Bandit. I thought you were saying Nintendo Black Crisis wrong. Yep, I get that a lot. Hey, listen, I'm trying to cover the new trailer that we just got for Breath of the Wild 2, but it's proven to be a real secret to everybody. Would you happen to be up for a collaboration to try to crack this thing? Absolutely, mate. We all know it's dangerous to go alone. Do you mind helping me out with mine right after? Are you kidding me? That would be an absolute honor. All right, mate. Sounds like a plan. Cheers. Oh, wait, how did you get this nut? Cheers. What? Oh, don't look at me that way. Why do you think they call me a bandit? To start things off, let's make sure we're all on the same page regarding the relationship between Hyrule Castle and Ganondorf. For nearly 30 years now, Hyrule Castle has been bound by the threads of fate to the Gerudo Thief of Legend. Beginning in A Link to the Past, Ganondorf manipulated his way into the castle's throne room under the alter ego known as Aghanim. In Ocarina of Time, the man with the evil eyes successfully captured and converted the castle into his own magnificent lair, an act of terror that he would later repeat in Twilight Princess. Now, as of the recent trailer for the sequel to Breath of the Wild that was revealed to us this week at the E3 Nintendo Direct, we can see unmistakable proof that Ganondorf's corpse and his terrifying malice have once again returned to Hyrule Castle. Although Calamity Ganon can be clearly seen swarming around the castle for the entirety of the first game, the notion that Ganondorf himself, or in this case, Ganondorf's corpse, was also located at the castle was debated before this new trailer, since in the first trailer we couldn't see exactly what was making the castle rise above the ground. I mean, some people thought it was mechanical legs, if you can believe that. This led some fans to theorise that Ganondorf's corpse could have been positioned in a cave somewhere else like the Great Plateau or the Gerudo Desert. However, since King Rome told us in the first Breath of the Wild that Calamity Ganon appeared deep below Hyrule Castle, and we can now see glowing red tendrils of malice lifting the castle from beneath, the most logical scenario is that Ganondorf's corpse has been positioned directly underneath Hyrule Castle for an unknown amount of time. But this fiery red malice in the new trailer plays an even larger role than just confirming Ganondorf's position. The first image that flashes across the screen is of our hero, Link, wearing the familiar blue clothing from the first trailer. It appears that this goopy malice is actually grappling onto his arm and seems to be completely engulfing it, in stark contrast to Link's arm glowing green in the first trailer. However, since the Master Sword is sheathed on Link's back in the first trailer, and in his hand in this new one, we can assume that the Malice attached itself to Link after the glowing green substance did. The fact that the Malice grappled onto the arm that Link uses to wield the Master Sword is, I believe, a very key detail to solving whatever it is that's happening here, but we'll return to that in a bit. Because of the shots of Zelda falling into an abyss surrounded by rocks, the appearance of the corpse of Ganondorf, Link's brief wielding of the Master Sword, and the lifting of the castle via tendrils of malice, we can assume that all of these events occur at the same time and place as the original trailer. In other words, at or under Hyrule Castle. Brilliantly said. I completely agree about the location and those details you pointed out regarding the Master Sword. In fact, let's talk about that. For the rest of the trailer, we're shown new segments of gameplay both on the ground in Hyrule and in the sky world above. Now, as far as talking about possibilities for what the mysterious floating sky world is? That's a topic for our other video. But what I want to focus on here is the fact that, as many fans have pointed out so far, we don't see the Master Sword for the remainder of the trailer. This is a huge detail because it implies many things. First, it implies that the events shown in the first trailer and at the beginning of this one must have happened before all segments of gameplay shown to us. This is further reinforced by the fact that not only does Link not have the Master Sword anymore, but his right arm is also shown to have 
have already been altered in the gameplay segments, which must have happened after the arm-altering events we've witnessed in both trailers now. Second, it implies that Link no longer has the Master Sword because of the malice. Or, in other words, that Ganondorf sent his malice to attack Link because of the Master Sword. Let's think about this situation real quick. You see, Link and Zelda may have been exploring a deep, dark, unsettling cave, but they were far from helpless. Remember, Zelda just unlocked her superpowers that she used previously to literally erase Dark Beast Ganon from existence, who, by the way, was a being made entirely of pure malice. And as if that wasn't enough of a counter to Ganondorf's power already, she also just so happens to be accompanied by one of the most bad-to-the-bone indestructible characters in gaming history, Link. The Hero of the Wild has been canonically proven to have faster reflexes than a guardian laser, and he also just so happens to be wielding the Blade of Evil's Bane, more than capable of killing Ganondorf. Together, this duo is literally the invincible, tried-and-true formula that has been proven over and over to be capable of defeating Ganondorf. And in this situation, they already have all the tools necessary to do just that. But here's the thing that changes the narrative. Ganondorf knows that. He's been defeated before by past incarnations of this exact same duo, and he's been sitting here thinking about that for literally over 10 millennia, which is more than enough time to come up with a counter for this very situation, which is exactly what he does. He removes Zelda from the situation first, throws her down a chasm that we cannot see the bottom of, and then, as proven in this trailer, he removes the Master Sword from Link, after which he stands up, arms raised, almost as if posing victoriously because his plan has come to fruition. Lastly, Link not having the Master Sword later on in the trailer implies that since he last had it in the castle, it's still in the castle with Ganondorf. It's enough to send chills down your spine, but what's even more chilling is what Ganondorf might have done with the sword. You see, Ganondorf is a schemer, one of the most cunning that's ever been. He's famously been known for manipulating Link and Zelda's heroic wills to his favour, as he did in Ocarina of Time when he literally used Link's drawing of the Blade of Evil's Bane to let himself into the Sacred Realm. The fact that the very weapon that would be used to defeat him was key to his ultimate plan of obtaining the Triforce can only be called a cruel irony. And now we're presented with Ganondorf easily casting Zelda aside and removing the Master Sword from Link the echoes of the past are beginning to grow louder. And if Ganondorf does in fact still have the Master Sword with Zelda removed from the picture and Link venturing off elsewhere, what does this mean for the Legendary Blade? And also, come to think of it, what does any of this have to do with the castle? I think what ties the Master Sword to the castle in this ironic twist of fate is directly related to the fact that Ganondorf raises the castle only after his confrontation with Link and Zelda. The big obvious question here is why would Ganondorf raise the castle? Is it to distance himself from Link and Zelda? Not gonna lie, that seems kind of trivial. Especially since one of Breath of the Wild's main calling cards was the fact that you can literally go wherever you want to go whenever you want to, removing any linearity from exploring the world around you. It seems odd to me that Nintendo would raise the castle out of reach and remove this staple of what made Breath of the Wild so great, and even led to it claiming the Game of the Year award for 2017. And also, if Ganondorf was truly just wanting to distance himself from the heroes, why would he wait until they crept into his lair before doing so? The only thing that makes complete logical sense here would be if he held off raising the castle because he needed something. Something he knew Link and Zelda would eventually be bringing straight to him. And that would be either Princess Zelda herself or the Master Sword, the two things that he removed from the situation in the trailer. It's possible that he was simply removing his two biggest threats from the picture, but we can't rule out the fact that he could also have something devious in mind for one or both of these two. However, even though this answers why he waited to raise the castle, it still doesn't answer why he raised the castle in the first place. It's likely that Ganondorf raises the castle not to create distance from potential threats on the surface, but rather in order to gain access to something after he has obtained either the Master Sword, Zelda, or both. One of the biggest takeaways from the new trailer is, obviously, the fact that there exists this floating island world above Hyrule, which is very interestingly not visible from the surface. 
Some have been theorising that this is because the new Sky Worlds, and subsequently the green sash-wearing Link, are from the distant past of Hyrule 10,000 years ago. But as we can see in the trailer, both this alleged past Link and current Link are using the same paraglider, which was not seen in the first game. Combine this with the fact that we can actually see some portions of present-day Hyrule from the viewpoint of the Sky Islands, such as the giant trees of Hyrule Ridge or the windmills in Tanagar Canyon. Logically, these tall trees would either not exist yet or would not nearly be as tall, and these windmills, which are made of wood, would also not exist 10,000 years ago. Because of these factors, I'm led to believe that this is probably present-day Hyrule which leaves us with only two possible explanations for the Sky World's invisibility. One, it could be obscured from the surface by way of the cloud barrier that Hylia set in the sky prior to the events of Skyward Sword, or two, it could be a different realm entirely. In either circumstance, it seems most likely that Ganondorf is raising the castle to gain access to this Sky World, and depending on what kind of realm it is, that might answer why he needed the Master Sword, but that's a theory for another video. My video, actually. Which is live right now over on his channel. So be sure to check it out in just a second because we're almost wrapped up here. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the implications of Hyrule Castle and the Master Sword, please consider dropping a like below to get it spread around on YouTube and subscribe if you haven't already for much more Zelda and Nintendo content to come. Huge, huge thanks to the legendary Zeltic for joining me on this one. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on, mate. And thanks to all of you for watching. As always, humongous Oh, and Bandit? Please delete my phone number. <laughs> Will do, sir. As always, humongous thanks goes to everyone for watching, and of course to my fabulous bandit crew, of which I have quite a few new names to announce. Please say hello to Green Link, RJ, Michael T, Solitaire Theories, Mr. Underscore Dim Gray, Danny B, Hylian Historian, and Nicholas M, who have all joined the ranks of my elite. You guys take my breath away and are the reason I can do what I do. If you watching are interested in helping create these videos, feel free to click on that join button below or follow the links in my description to my Patreon or merch pages. Also down there are the links to my social media pages, so come follow me for all the haps on Twitter. That's all I've got for this one, so as always, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. This is Mass Nintendo Bandit, looking forward to seeing you again and signing out. Peace.